Hey folks, in today's video I'm going to talk to you about how to actually get your armies finished. Army painting can be a real struggle for a lot of people. It, it takes a long time, it requires painting a lot of models that are quite repetitive, and it's often just less interesting than that shiny new character model that's just come out. But, ultimately if you want to play games with a beautiful army, you have to paint it. I have a few tips, born of a lot of experience, on how to give yourself the best chance of success at completing it. Now, these steps are hopefully not too onerous. I've tried to keep them limited, but I'm hopeful that with some of these tips, you will be able to get yourself a fully painted army in a reasonable frame of time. Before you start, figure out exactly what it is that you are wanting to paint. Okay? Now, it doesn't have to be a perfect 2,000 point army, but if you're shooting for you know, 2,000 points in 40k, get yourself your initial list, add in a handful of units that you may want to swap in or swap out, and consider that whole structure your army. This list gives you a definitive line at which you have succeeded. You have painted your army. Any extra units that you add in a little bit later on, you absolutely can, but you've got your starting point. This also means that you know what it is that you have ahead of you, and you can choose what to paint next accordingly. The first thing I would say is start with a couple of character models. Now, I usually set aside my absolute favorite model for the very end. That's my reward for completing the whole thing. But I'll pick out a couple of models that are characters, but are still representative of the majority of models you're using. So for instance, if you've got a goblin army, you may have a couple of troll allies, but they're not going to share a lot of the color scheme with your rank and file goblins. However, some goblin sorcerers, maybe if you're doing Gloom Spike Gits, the Gobapalooza unit or Zarbag's Gits, those models are goblins, but they're a little special, they're a little bit different. Those are the perfect thing to start with. And the reason I say this is because you can test your color scheme a little bit with these. Maybe you struggle a little bit visualizing the color scheme, or maybe you are going to learn through practice ways to improve the color scheme or speed up your execution of it. Doing those little tweaks on a few models that are representative of your army as a whole, but are still a little bit special, is perfect. Because you don't have to worry about repainting them if you change your recipe a little bit. You can just set, keep them a little bit different, and it's fine because they are a little bit different. They are special characters. Now, you are going to want to hold back some special characters if you can, to mix in with your regular units, to break them up, to keep yourself a little bit more interested in the project as you go along. But starting with a few is really going to help you dial in your color scheme and your method of execution and hopefully speed up everything that is going to come next. Once you've got that color scheme dialed in, the next thing is to really hit those big units as early as possible. They are the hardest part of the project to complete. Getting them out of the way early frees you up to do more effort and more interesting things with the more special units, right? Whether that's artillery or beasts or more special characters, named heroes, whatever it is. If you've got that 60 plus model unit of goblins or skeletons or, you know, pikemen, whatever it is, if you've got that out the way, you can actually put a little bit more TLC into those other units. So get those big units out of the way early. And the biggest part of this is that you are going to feel so much better once those units are complete. When you're doing your big units, 
Also remember that little mistakes are not something to worry about. If one or two of your goblins don't have that little pouch painted in leather and it's still the black that the cloak was painted in, screw it. The next thing that I would say is do any of the more unusual units for your army at the very end. For instance, in a goblin army, this may be a unit or two of trolls, or it may be that one mangler squig that you have when the rest of your army is just night goblins with stabbers and or shooters. And the reason that I say do this at the end is because those units are not going to have much colour overlap with the rest of your army. So you're not really going to get much in the way of benefit from doing them alongside the rest of the army. But also, by the time you get to the end of the project, you're going to have those basic colours really nailed down. You'll be very familiar with how to do them and how to make them look right. So it's going to be a little bit easier to try and find areas of those unusual units where you can incorporate those. And that's important to help those more unusual units fit with the rest of your army. If you've got Dankhold Trogoths in your army and your rank and file goblins have brown tunics, maybe you want to make sure that his loincloth is the same shade of brown. Maybe you want to put some detailing on the base that has the same kind of green as their skin tone. Or maybe some drool coming out of their mouth that matches the colour of the goblin skin. Those kinds of things are really going to help your army feel cohesive, along with, obviously, using the same basing throughout. Finally, the reward for you getting through all of this is to keep that favourite model of yours till the very end. It's a great way to motivate you to get through everything else. It gives you the opportunity to really sit down and put some time into that piece, hopefully, and it means you've already nailed your core colour scheme. You don't even have to really think about it. You can get that down on this model and then you can take it to the next level. You can add those extra highlights, put in some extra shading, get nice creamy smooth blends on it, pick out all of the wonderful accents and details. And all of that is going to look that much better because you've had to struggle so much less with your core colors. So those are my tips for getting a army fully painted. There are plenty of other things that are going to help you. There's nothing like working under a deadline for actually finishing something. You can really plan to the nth degree, but I think these tips will help give you greater success on an army, whether it's a new army for a new year that you're just starting or something that you're returning to after a while. And one last tip that I would give you is to make sure that you take note, especially of the core colours, how you painted them. That means that if you come back in the future and you're doing some extra colours here and there, painting a few extra units, retouching models that have been damaged, whatever it is, you're going to be able to match it with the army you already have. So, there you go. I really hope this helps you with getting armies to the table whether it's a small Blood Bowl team, a Necromunda squad, or a 5,000 point mega army of orcs and goblins. Whatever it is, I really hope to see a lot of work from you. If you've got any tips on how you get your armies painted, please do put them in the comments. If this video has helped you complete an army, send me videos of it, show me photos. You can find me on Instagram at Raggy Paints. You can put it in the comments below. Whatever it is, I would really love to see it. A big part of why I do this is because of you guys. So if what I'm putting out there is helping, I really want to know about it. As always, please do consider checking out the affiliates I work with. Links to them in the description below. It helps me out and it gets you a little bit off as well. Please do consider liking, subscribing, all of those things really do help the channel. Give it a thumbs up. If you subscribe, click that bell icon and get notified when I've got new content out. I live stream on Thursdays. I put out video content every Monday. So there's plenty going on that you may want to hear about.
as always thanks for watching later days